Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider in a like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. Well, let's crack on with today's first story. Much love, guys. Now, today's first story comes from Big Platypus, who says, My 24 female boyfriend, 26 male of six months, told me that I need to unlove the men from my past before I can love him. And before we do get into this first story, I do want to give you a warning that it does contain physical abuse. So if you do want to skip the story, please feel free to do so. Timestamps are always down in the description and along the timeline below. Thank you. I've been dating Mark oh no, for six months and I've known him for around eight months. I just moved to my current city nine months ago for grad school and Mark was one of the first people that I became close with. He's been really great and helped me feel comfortable in a new city. Recently, Mark and I said, I love you for the first time. Everything was fine for a while until he told me that I was the first person he's ever said that to. I was a little surprised, but not in a bad way and didn't really make a big deal of it. He asked me how many other guys I've said it to. I told him one. That seemed to bother him. Mark knows that I'm occasionally in contact with one of my exes, Eli, and it has never been an issue for Mark. However, after our conversation, Mark asked me if Eli was the ex that I said I love you to. I was honest and said yes. Background, Eli and I grew up together and dated from when we were 15 to 22. We broke up when I got accepted to grad school and found out I'd have to move across the country because we realized that we had grown into different people and we weren't going to spend our lives together. The breakup was extremely amicable and we remained close friends while I was in town before I moved. And we talked maybe once a week currently. Just basic, how are you texts. Mark asked me how I feel about Eli now. I said that while I don't love him romantically anymore, he was a huge part of my life since childhood and I still have very positive feelings about him and consider him an important person. Mark kept pressing, asking me if I still love Eli in any sense. I said that no, I'm not in love with him, but Mark almost didn't seem to believe me. He kept prodding me until I finally said that I will probably always love Eli as a person and respect him a lot, but I have no romantic connection to him and fully accept that we are different people now. Mark was upset by this. The next day, Mark told me he doesn't think that I can truly love him unless I learn to unlove the men from my past. I asked what he meant and again clarified that I am not in love with Eli and he said that I should retain no love in any form for any other guys I've been with. I was quite honestly shocked and tried to explain to him that me loving as a friend is totally and completely different than being romantically in love with someone and that he is the only one I have those feelings for. He insisted that I need to change my feelings about Eli. He almost seemed mad that I'm not resentful over the breakup. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. Is this totally weird and out of line or am I overreacting? Just to be clear, Eli and I talk very sparingly. Probably 10 texts a week, if that, just to check in. I have no feelings for him anymore, but he was a huge part of my life for many, many years. And I don't think it's unreasonable for me to have generally positive feelings for him. Is Mark out of line or am I? Edit just for context, since people are hung up on a 10 texts a week. Mark and I easily exchange 50 to 100 texts a day, and we see each other multiple times a week. I consider 10 texts to be a brief conversation. It's a very surface level, how are you, how's work type thing. It's not in depth. Holy moly, 50 to 100 texts a day. How'd you get anything done? <laughs> and it just sounds like Mark is insecure in this situation. And the question that was going through my head is that he wants you to unlove this person. That you should retain no love in any form for any other guys you've been with. How do you measure that? How... What's going to be good enough for him, for him to accept that? The only way I can see him, the path this is going down, is that he wants you to like totally cut this person off. I mean, I don't know, but it just feels like if you was to say, you know, I don't love him anymore, he'd go, no, that's not acceptable. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know. But a user says Mark is insecure and he's trying to make it your problem. Either he trusts you or he doesn't. Whatever happened in your past is irrelevant. He sounds a bit emotionally immature at the moment, although if he's only 26, he still has some time to work on it. As a side note, so many of the people mentioned in problems on here seem to strangle the life out of their relationships by not really trusting the person they are with. If you trust them, trust them, and take the risk of committing to the relationship. 
If you don't, work on it or end the relationship. Roguelike says, just because you dated someone and broke up doesn't mean they just magically disappear from your life and your memories like they didn't exist. Mark is talking some very immature nonsense from the perspective of a person who doesn't have any dating experience. Mark needs to grow up. I think it's perfectly fine to be friends with an ex. June PL says, truthfully, what's the point of checking in with your ex? Why is it important that you tell him how's work? What's the point really aside from not wanting to detach from him? The relationship between you and Eli and you and Mark seems juvenile at best. Why'd you exchange 50 to 100 texts a day? For what reason other than to keep tabs be codependent on one another? You can have positive feelings for your ex without texting him 10 times a week. Other than the occupational happy birthday or conversation about a family issue or something important, or checking in once every few months, there is absolutely no reason for you to keep touch weekly with your ex. Not when you have a boyfriend. A great girlfriend or a great boyfriend never lets an ex get in the middle of their current relationship. Positive feelings or not, he is an ex. You can still love him without texting him every week. The best thing Mark can do is dump you and find a better girlfriend. You don't have to unlove your ex, but you do have to respect your new boyfriend which you obviously don't. OP says, this is a weird comment all around, but I'll address a few things. The point of checking in with my ex is because we are friends. I like to know what my friends are up to and my friends like to know what I am up to. That's like basic human interaction 101. Mark and I exchange 50 to 100 texts a day, not because we're codependent, but because we enjoy each other's company. And when I can't see him in person, I like to text him about things happening in my day or send him funny things I run across. Texting the people you are close to is very normal in today's world. What's the point of having a friendship or relationship if you can't communicate with the other person? It's very weird to me that you think it's abnormal to text your SO. I don't see him every day, but I like talking to him and telling him about my life and hearing about his life. Also, I've addressed this before in the post and I realize people have differing opinions on it. But no reason to keep in touch with your ex when you have a boyfriend is not something I agree with. My ex is a friend and as I've already stated, Texting friends is a very normal thing to do. Maybe we're from different generations or just have different views on these things, but texting your friends is exactly what texting was invented for. So I wouldn't be told that it's unhealthy to text my boyfriend. Sugar Pie says, Mark sounds very immature. I guess I wouldn't like it if my boyfriend said he still loved his in any way, but you have made it clear that you do not have any romantic feelings for him. And that is all that matters. And it makes sense that you would still care for him as a human being because he was a very big part of your life and it was not that long ago. I'm not sure what you can do to make him understand that you love him and that you've moved on from your ex. He's going to believe what he wants to believe. The OP does come in with her update and says, figured I'd update my post from about a month ago. Unfortunately, there wasn't a happy ending, but I am grateful for a lot of the advice I received here. Thank you Reddit for helping me keep my head on straight. After I made my first post, I read all the comments and thought about everything for a few days. A lot of people mentioned that they would not be comfortable with the frequency of my communication with my ex. I thought that was fair. People also mentioned that Mark's behavior was pretty controlling and not okay. I also thought that was fair. I went to talk to Mark and told him that I understood he was uncomfortable with me being in touch with Eli weekly and that I would be totally willing to cut that down. I also reiterated again that I was not currently in love with Eli and hadn't been for a while. Mark was understanding this time and seemed happy with the fact that I offered to cut down my contact with Eli. But then I told Mark that although I was willing to do this, I wasn't happy with how he approached the issue and that I found his behavior controlling. I basically told him that I want to approach issues in a more rational way and I would appreciate if he opened the dialogue rather than just telling me what to do and that I wouldn't put up with him trying to command me to do something, especially something so ridiculous. I said everything in the same tone as I used for the first half of the conversation. I wasn't yelling at him or admonishing him, just trying to tell him where my boundaries are. You guys, Mark flew off the handle. He started screaming at me. I obviously wasn't having it, so I got up to leave. He started throwing dishes and random kitchen items at me and grabbed me and slammed my head into the door jam. I ended up with a nasty black eye and a busted lip. Lucky for me, a neighbor heard the commotion and called the cops. Mark was arrested and I was taken to the hospital. Yes, some pressing charges and filed for a restraining order. Overall, it was a horrible incident, but I'm glad this happened earlier in the relationship rather than later. I am forever grateful for the neighbor who called the cops. I'm also grateful to most of you guys for telling me that I wasn't being insane in my first post for pointing out the early warning signs. 
It wasn't the best ending, but I'm okay and I'm just glad it's over. Take this as a cautionary tale, I guess. Edit, I've gotten a lot of concerned messages, which I appreciate, telling me to watch out for Mark now and that abusers are often at their most dangerous right after a breakup. Just to ease everyone's mind, I'm staying with a classmate who Mark does not know for the time being, so I'm well protected. Thanks, everyone. And there was a lot of people, like Opie said in the Reddit, you know, just giving them warnings about how to stay safe and various bits of advice like that. And, you know, I'm glad that Opie is getting out of there, of course, and pressing those charges and getting restraining order. And I'm also glad that they're leaning on the support around them to help them get through this for the time being. But what do you guys make of this situation? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. Let's move on to another story. And our next story comes from Bleach Die Problem. It does come with an update as well. That says, am I the asshole for refusing to bleach my hair for a wedding? So I have a weird problem. And after I told my boyfriend, he told me this sub would be the perfect place to get help on. So I, 25 female, am meant to be in the bridal party of my friend Zoe's 26 female wedding in December 2024. A couple of days ago, she met with me and the rest of the bridal party to discuss what the plan was for hair, makeup, dresses, etc. At first, it seemed reasonable. She's going for a winter wonderland type of theme, so blue dresses, all in different shades, lined up as a gradient, with silvery accents, snowflake jewelry and soft makeup, even blue contacts for those of us without blue eyes. Last one's a bit weird, but it's no big deal to me. I've worn color contacts for Halloween. The bit that ended up being an issue for me is that Zoe requested we all get our hair dyed. A couple of members of the bridal group are natural blondes with dyed ends, and so is Zoe, but she wants to go for a platinum for the wedding. But the rest of us are two brunettes, a strawberry blonde, she wasn't blonde enough, and a redhead. I'm one of the brunettes, and, and I'm the only one in the group who has never dyed or bleached their hair. I considered it, but I can never stay settled on what I want to do. And I'd hate to spend money on something that I end up hating. On top of that, my mum spent from ages 5 to 13 flat ironing my hair almost every single day. It really damaged my hair. It's almost certain it's resulted in my hair being thinner than it used to be. I know bleaching can also damage your hair and I don't feel comfortable taking that risk yet. I told Zoe I wouldn't be able to dye my hair. She insisted it would be fine as my hair seemed quite healthy and she would be paying for the bleaching treatments for us all. I again said no. Thanks so much, but I can't. I asked if I could just wear a wig and she said no. That wigs are cheap and unnatural and she wants us to have our real hair bleached instead of some cheap imitation for the day. After more back and forth, she told me I should go home and think about the fact that I'm ruining her vision and that I'll be ruining the photos and wedding video and that she and her fiance, 30 male, will be putting together for his grandparents, 84 male and 82 female to view since they won't be able to fly in from Argentina. I apologized, paid for my meal and left. I really don't want to dye my hair, but I also don't want to ruin Zoe's picture perfect day. I don't think I'm being difficult or wrong here, but am I? Edit, for a little clarification on how things stand and what's expected. I'm a six to seven on the hair color scale. The other brunette is a five. Zoe wants us to be at nine or 10. She only wants herself to be platinum. She currently sits at a 10 on the scale. Also, I do not have dark eyes. My eyes are green. Two of the other girls do have light brown eyes though. Edit two, so I woke up to this thread being locked and I'm full of too many comments to read at once. Guess it's a good thing I don't have to work today. I want to go ahead and thank everyone for their effort to help, advise and educate me through these weird last 24 hours for me. I'm going to try and meet up with Zoe in a few days and speak to her about this whole mess and see if we can find a compromise that doesn't involve bleach. If you still have thoughts or advice, I'm going to slap a copy of this post on my profile. I'm also going to try and filter comments to a question and answers and answer some questions. Thanks again. Bright blonde hair, blue gradient dresses, blue eyes. All I could think of is like uh, Frozen, Elsa. You're going to look like a bunch of Elsas. <laughs> Maybe it's like some sort of Disney theme wedding or something. I don't know. But asking people to like dye their hair, put in contact lenses. It's just, it's just too much, man. I mean... I mean, by all means, request it. But when you get told no, don't start having a fit about it and how you're ruining like her vision. <laughs> Just take a step back and think, yeah, I am being a bit absurd here. This is ridiculous. 
But Air of Ravenclaw says, not the arsehole. I would have backed out on the demands to wear contacts. Trying to force others to bleach their hair for a wedding? Absurd. Just back out now. It's not worth being part of this crazy Elsa theme wedding. I'm <laughs> glad I'm not the only one. She's only going to get worse. Run. Additional says, they make very realistic lace fronts these days. Bleaching your hair is extreme and very bad for your hair. I would bow out of the wedding altogether if I couldn't wear a wig. You are not the asshole here. Opie says, that's what I tried to tell her. She still said she wanted us to have our real hair and not fakes and tried to talk about wig disasters, falling off, styling issues, etc. A commenter below that said they feel extra bad for the friend who's a redhead that she will never get a natural color back if she bleaches it. Jazz like humor says not the arsehole. She's worried about a wig looking unnatural. Making someone with a darker complexion with darker hair and dark eyes into a blue-eyed blonde is going to look really unnatural. A wedding is not just a perfect day for the couple getting married. It's also a social event where the couple are the hosts and the guests are, well, guests and need to be welcomed and comfortable. It's clear that your friend doesn't want you, a dark-eyed, dark-haired person in her wedding. She wants cookie cutter Barbie dolls. She can line up some blue eyed blonde blow up dolls to get a wedding party that looks identical. Or she can welcome her friends to a bridal party as a diverse group of people that they are. Mig says not the arsehole. Perhaps if Zoe wants a match set of blonde bridesmaids then she should hire a bunch of movie extras to stand next to her in dresses. That way she could specify their height and bus size as well just to get those photos perfect. If on the other hand, she wants to have her friends stand with her when she gets married, then she should expect her friends to look how her friends look. Wear this dress is a normal ask for a bridesmaid. Bleach your hair is not. Sure, it's her wedding, and if she only wants you as a bridesmaid if you're willing to dye your hair, then that's her choice. You can say no and not be a bridesmaid. And one more comment from Waterslide who says not the arsehole. Zoe's demands go far beyond the wedding. You shouldn't be forced to make a major change to your look for her day and her photos. If she didn't want a brunette, she shouldn't have chosen a brunette or she should have let you know before you agreed to be a part of the party. Hang in there and don't bleach your hair. It's not worth it. You're not ruining her marriage. She's the one ruining it by not anticipating the fact that you're a human being with your own choices and that you were likely to refuse. The OP did update their post and they said, I met with Zoe yesterday afternoon and we talked things over. I pointed out a lot of things that were brought up in the comments and presented them as concerns of me and a couple of friends of mine. And not the concerns of millions that saw it online. Turns out she was part of those millions. Someone sent her one of the TikToks that my Reddit post was read in and she has been thinking about things. She told me she felt a little embarrassed about this all being out there online, even if nobody knew who we were. And I apologized. I explained that I really didn't have many people who weren't involved in the wedding to speak with about this and that I needed the advice. She also apologized and said that she realizes now that the bleaching was a completely out of line request. She said that since she's only bleached her hair once and because she's naturally blonde to begin with, she didn't know anything about the process for bleaching dark hair and didn't know it would be so difficult, take so long and could cause so much damage. She said looking back and knowing what she knows now, she feels like she was a huge bitch. I reassured her that she wasn't a bitch. She was just uneducated and passionate about something and we clashed. We hugged it out and things are good now. About the wigs, there will be none. She's scrapping the group blonde idea. I convinced her that she would stand out far better if the whole bridal party wasn't blonde and that dark hair and red hair would work amazingly with her winter theme. The contacts are also being scrapped unless any of us decide we want to use them. They are very piercing blue and kind of cool looking. About the grandparents, Zoe said Frank's family in Argentina isn't of German descent, so nothing to wonder or argue about. She was however horrified when she put all those pieces together and thought about how it looked. She had really been thinking Elsa vibes, not Aryan Nation vibes, and that embarrassed her more than the story being out there by itself. She didn't even know Nazis fled to South America after World War II. Zoe has officially messaged everyone in the bridal party to let them know about the change of plans and to apologize for the outburst and the stress this put on everyone. She's also very excited for all of us to come up with a new hair and makeup look and to go dress shopping. Also, those who asked if the groomsmen were being held to the same standard. I don't know. And after finally getting this whole fiasco over with, I didn't dare to ask. Zoe and I have made up and everything's fine now. Sorry if this update wasn't the crazy story everyone was looking forward to. Don't apologize for having a more positive 
update to your story. I'm glad it didn't go absolutely crazy and blow up because this is your life. This is your friend. This is their wedding. And I hope things do continue for you in this more positive way that it seems to be heading with open communication and able to discuss these things in a more mature way, which is just, which I think is a good thing. But now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? <laughs> Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Now, just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories. Your love, your support, your time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so much for being involved, truly. And hopefully I will see you in the next one. Take care and much love. I can smell the smoke from the bacon. Yum, yum, yum. Let's go. See the sun shining from the windows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I know that today will be a good day. Okay. I know that today will be a good day. Yeah, yeah. Baby.